guys we are back hopefully you can tell um, I've done one side of the little emblem sigils whatever you want to call it any of the details we, we needed to add in and uh, we're gonna do the other side together obviously you can see that uh, I did the hair and it turned out really awesome I was gonna video it for you geez there I go dropping it now I was gonna video it for you guys but uh, it got a little messy uh, I won't I won't lie the the glue and then trying to get all these on same time was just a little bit of a mess. Anyways, I want to show you real quick before we start uh, etching in our sigils how we got the hair like that is I take my sickle blade, that's what I call it, just this curved blade. You get you a scrap piece of wood or, or whatever you want to use and you take just the edge of it along the edge of the wood and you just run it along, I mean just ever so slightly and as you see you get a curled piece of thin strips of wood and then after that <coughs> we just put glue all around the hair and we staggered the uh, little strips of hair wood and the the designs we wanted and I think it turned out really cool and in hindsight I should have painted the uh, head the, the hair part of the head first then glued that and then painted that but it's the first time I did it so we learned together but I'm really uh, stoked how I finally get to incorporate these little wispy strips into something. <coughs> but without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, get working on this. Now the reason I'm using the wood burner is we're going to paint these little symbols and stuff on. But when I use the wood burner, it just tends to make them pop a little better. They tend to be a little bit more visible. Everything so far has turned out really good. Only thing I would have liked to have been better is this hand. The fingers been a little thinner, but every single time I tried fooling with it, it just they wanted to break. So it just wasn't worth keeping fooling with it. Now I tried to stay as true to detail as I could with these little symbols, but some of it is just hard to to see honestly. I'm honestly surprised at uh, how much of a following Hocus Pocus has gotten. That it's so difficult to find good pictures of their costumes. And if you notice we've had to etch along here because I a little oversight in the design I didn't realize it was a uh, very layered outfit. So we had to add a little something there at the end. Rub this off a little bit down here. Show it with a pen instead of just a pencil. Now, just like uh, anything, if y'all are using a wood burner, be careful, because true to its name, it'll burn you. Just kind of trying to open up this little lacy section a little bit more. We, we carved it in there, but it's so finely 
detailed in there. there we go. We're doing one spot, might as well do another. Really getting down to the wire, getting this uh done for you guys by Halloween. But I think it's turned out really well. Right, I think we're gonna continue the little symbols. That way I don't keep rubbing them off with my hand. And then we'll do the arm and all that up there. heat coming off this thing as close to my face is intense. And my eyes water. Oh, and the glue we used to put the hair on is I just used some uh, basic super glue. Reason being is I wanted something that would dry fast. But you can use E6000 craft glue. You can use wood glue, Elmer's glue, contact cement, wh whatever you fancy. Like I said, the only reason I went with what I did is the drying time, so I could have that hair set up really good and still be able to continue working on it without having to worry about it falling off. I'm curious how hard it's going to be to paint that hair though without damaging it. Alright. Normally I would like to lay this character down, but I don't want to damage the hair or the nose. I get the noses as good as I'm going to get it. I'm, I'm happy with it. Does it look exactly like Bette Midler? No. But I guess that's just not my, my wheelhouse of skills. To do like photorealistic miniatures. But once we get the paint on and everything, I think it'll look close enough. See, this is the hardest part back here is finding a picture that actually shows what the back of her daggone dress looks like. Even in the movie, it's just uh, so billowy, you only get glimpses of it. Like, you never get a, a full view of what the back of her dress looks like. There's snakes, and the snakes aren't exactly like this. They have more coils to where they're attached to each other. But I couldn't get a good enough picture to know exactly what it's supposed to look like, so... We just went with this. You get the general idea of what it's supposed to be. Now you can find a lot of uh, costumes like other people have made or like are sold in stores and stuff, but the majority of those are not accurate to the actual movie. And that's what we're trying to go for is uh, as accurate as I can to the source material.
shoot on that hip area. Now this little circular symbol here with these like Z looking things, they're not, from what I could tell, they're not actual like Z's, they're little legs. So you got a thigh, calf, and then a foot. And I obviously can't put that much detail into it that small, but now you know. so hard to be able to hold this thing in an angle that really works. I'm so used to holding my knives down close to the blade and obviously something like this, you hold it that far down you're going to get burnt, something awful. We're almost, almost done with this section. Can't wait to get to the painting. That way we can really start seeing it come to fruition.